All right, all students, welcome back to another lesson. And this is going to be kind of like a part two on drawing from your imagination when you can't imagine it. So the first video I did, there were a lot more things that I wanted to say, but I really didn't get into it because I always jump from this to that. So this one is going to get a little bit more into it because a lot of people, a lot of that subscribe to this channel want to do comics and Although it's good to be able to find stuff on the internet, everywhere you go, you might not be able to do that. Your phone might not work. Your computer might not work. You might not have any service. So you can't see everything. So you're going to have to kind of imagine it. But it's hard to imagine something when you don't know what it looks like or, or how to do it. So I'm going to kind of expound on that a little bit. And, of course, everything is a shape. That's that's the beginning of starting to draw is your shape. So you just start, start throwing some shapes in there where you know these things go. And then you just kind of fill that out, fill that in, fill in the blanks, shall we say. All right, so as I said, everything is a shape. Everything is a shape. This mouse is a shape. This phone holder is a shape. You know, this, you know, the pens that we, we draw with. So everything is a shape. So you master the basic shape of anything, then you start to draw. You can always add details later. Don't get pulled in by trying to draw big details on things right away. Uh, I'm looking for something. Even the body, the body is is um, a shape. And since I'm at that, let me pull this this guy down. Let me pull this. All right. So I pulled up my body. Body Coon, Body Coon, I think it's Body Chan, Body Coon, one of them, the guy. So this is the little figure here that um, I have, and I'm going to use them every now and then to show you exactly what I'm saying when I say. So each part of the body is a shape. Let me put them down. Take them off. Put them down. Put them down. Is a shape. Somehow you have your torso, and I've gone over this a number of times. So if this is your first time here at the channel go back into my my um, channel and see all of the different things I have in fact I have a um, kind of a, a, um, a walkthrough I don't know what to call it right now of all the things on my channel and I'll show you that in a minute nope I'm gonna throw it in right now because I forgot to leave a space for me to kind of intro it into the video so what this is this is a it's me filming all of the videos that I have. As a lot of times people will go to my channel or they'll see my channel, discover it. They'll ask me, can I draw this or can I draw that? And a lot of times I've already drawn it. There's over like 300 and some videos that I've done so far. So this is me scanning the page of everything that I've done so that you can check it out and see that because a lot of people will want this or that and it may be already on the page so that will keep you from having to go and try to find this particular thing. So all I did was I took my camera and I, and I kind of uh, I videoed the thing as it was running because I don't have a screen recorder yet as in to rec record it live. So it's kind of like ghetto, but you can slow it down and you can stop it and see some of the videos that I have or whatever, drawing hands or faces or feet or action positions or whatever. But it's all on there. So let me go ahead and show you that right right now. And then we'll get on with the video. So yeah, yeah. It's just just hit videos and you'll see all of these. All right, let me put this in there right now.
let me get some drawing and I've talked for how many minutes now and haven't drawn anything yet. So of course I say the body is just shapes. They're all just shapes on top of shapes on top of other shapes to create anything actually. So ball, circle, cylinder, cylinder, circle, cylinder. Now the cylinders like this part of the arm is going to be wide here and narrow here. And you know, you'll get that in a minute. Just start drawing it. You have this, you have this part right here, which I call the tuna can. Usually a lot of the, the figures have this already turned like that, but this is why I do this center line and then go up and this is getting really detailed i don't want to get detailed i just want to show you the shapes here you have this part right here but they have like this little ball right here but i usually do the, the house or well, just think of underwear i just call it the upside down house because that's the easiest shape to draw leaving room for your junk so you round that off and you have another cylinder here the circle here for the knee and then you have another cylinder here so same thing on the other side it's easy. If you can draw one side, you can draw the other side. Now, the hard part of that would be um, getting your proportions right or keeping your proportions right. And this is half a triangle right here. And this is the other half of a triangle right there. And you have a character. You have a person. Now, if you're going to draw, if you're going to dress this person, it doesn't make a difference. All this extra stuff in there because clothes will cover it up. So, as I say, the, the, the one big thing is you have to get the, the hand, the hand... <laughs> You get the proportions right. You have to know how long, you know, the arms are and how long the legs are. So you don't want one arm, the wrist right here and the other wrist is way down here. That's uh, something I see with a lot of um, young artists is because nobody really told them how to, you know, to start drawing, how to get these proportions right or where they end and so forth. So the wrist is going to come down by the crotch, depending on how, how, if the arms are straight down to your side, your wrists are going to be right here. But if your arms are out, like up, then it's different. So, and as I say, once you start, once you get the cylinders and so forth right and the proportions right on it or the distance and the length right, then you do little things like shape it up, which is just really, 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 really simple. So, as I say, everything is a shape. Now, if you're doing comics, or you're doing any kind of fantasy drawing stories uh whatever you're going to have characters you're going to have characters or, or beasts or whatever now they have to be put on something they can't just float around like this or just walking in the snow you know with no background you have to have some kind of background and you're either going to have background that is flat like if i put this guy on the land he's, he's on ground he's just flat he's just flat like that i could put some I could put the ground further back, which means he's close closer to me. <clears throat> he's closer to me than, you know, the wall, and I could put it back even further. You know, but that's like on flat ground. Now, you can't have everything on flat ground because it's boring. So you have to you do perspective to do your, your person, your whatever, your whatever something is sitting on. As I say, it can't all sit on flat ground and you're looking straight at it because that'll be boring, especially if you're doing a comic. So how do we do that? We take something off of a flat ground. It's all in, <clears throat> it's all in the triangle. So like if this was a flat ground, let's just say I do a table. Let's do a table. This is my table. Two legs, you won't see the other two legs. You won't see the other two legs because they're perfectly behind that. So this is my table. I'm looking at my table. And here's a cup of water right on top of that table, right? Okay, so you can't draw every scene like that. But what if you wanted to see a little bit of the top of the table? So you have your front of your table. And whenever you do per perspective, everything is going to be a triangle. Just remember, just, just imagine a triangle. Okay, let's just, just do a triangle real quick. Here's my triangle. And then depending on how much of the table you want to see, you just chop it off right where you want to see that table. Well, right where you want to see the end of that table. I gotta find my goodie race. I've got a goodie racer somewhere. 
So again, here we have my legs coming down. And because this back, this back corner, you see that, that second leg is going to come down like that. And this glass of water is not going to be straight like this. When you place it on that table, you are, since you're seeing the top of that table, you're starting to see the top of that, that glass too. If this was a glass and it was sitting right on the table, let me turn it around so you don't see these back legs. Yeah. And then you tilted it up, or you, you're going to start to see the inside of that glass. And it depends on how much this table is turned up, determines how much of the inside of that glass you're going to see. And that, that goes with anything. It could be a chair. It could be a computer. It could be anything. And this is how you start to set your stuff on top of your ground. Your ground. So something like that would probably be more like this. I'm going to, put, I'm going to make it higher, a little higher. And you have to see the roundness of the bottom of that cup as well. And then it starts to fit. I have seen people do flat stuff on non-flat surfaces. So the more you decide to move that table up, the more you're going to have to move stuff up as well. So this goes for your ground, your interior. However, draw that triangle and then chop it off wherever. You know, until you get it to where you're above it. And when you're above it, all you see is this square right here. And here's your cup right there. So the more you tilt it down, the more triangle you're going to have. So that triangle could be point of the triangle. Could, could be here, could be here, could be here, here, here. So anything that's going back or anytime you see something from above, you're going to have to use this triangle method. You know, I'm sure you've seen the roads. When people do the roads, they go back in a, in a triangle, you do train tracks, they go back, you know, or the <clears throat> same thing with, with um, anything sitting along the road or on the ground that goes back. It's going to get smaller and shorter, smaller, like these could be like phone poles. So just think about it. if you took a rock. If the character had a rock, he had a rock in his hand and he threw it, that rock would get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as it goes back. Same thing with this. Anything that goes back gets smaller. If it was a car on the road and it drove way back, it would get smaller. But it's got to go into this kind of a tri uh, triangle shape. So as I say, it could go this way. A lot of people have trouble drawing boxes. So if I drew the box, if I drew the square box, tubes, and I said I wanted to go this way, I would put my point here. If I wanted to go that way, I put my point there. So let's just say I wanted to go this way. So all three lines are going to go to that point, making a triangle. Triangle, yeah. And then I just chop it off where I wanted it to. Same thing if I'm going to do a building, if I'm going to do a car, if I'm going to do a truck, whatever the case may be, as long as you have this thing going to that point in whatever direction you want, then you have perspective. I'm not talking about perspective. You have it. You have it right. So you know, if I would turn that into a car or something, you know, maybe I would lengthen it out. But I'm not. I'm just going to do this, and you know, you might see the bottom of the wheel, other side of the wheel, and whatever truck, bus, whatever. And so that would be the same for the road. The road would also go here. And you couldn't have a flat road. It couldn't be driving on a flat road. And here's a, here's a tree. And here's another tree. It, it won't work. It won't work. You have to have your road going back to that line as well. And the trees just throw it right off. So I'm going to get rid of that as best I can. And... Since it's a road, you want you want to keep it going past the bus or truck or car or whatever it is you're doing. So again, just like the cup, if you had a tree, that tree would have to be round. The, the bottom, uh, when you round off the top of something, cup, whatever, the bottom has to be just as round 
as well. You can't round something off and then have it flat. And that's just like a tube of toothpaste. So you have to have that. So that top of that tree, if this is a tree, the bottom has to be rounded to match this level of ground or this level of tilt on the ground. So it'd be like that, it'd be round, then come up and it would fit. Let me use this pen. So if I did this, then come up and then you could have your tree however so if I did this it just wouldn't work especially if you kind of do a book you know a, a serious book you have to have that roundness because you're tilting you are tilting the ground so if this was a table I'm looking straight at it but if I tilt it more Let's see if I can do this. You see, you would barely see it. You see how the two sides, this side, it's hard to hold this up because my camera is above me. This side and the other side, when I tilt it, they actually look like they're going in at that direction. So if, if I had something, let's see if I have something round and small, if I had a quarter or a dime or something. Well, this little eraser, this little eraser. So, flat facing you hopefully it won't, it's gonna roll off so when I start to tilt it over and you start to see some more of the bottom of this you'll start to see some of the top of this eraser the more I tilt it over the more it falls off the more oh, here's my good eraser maybe it'll stick to it a little bit more so <laughs> the more I turn it over the more of the top of this eraser you will see and that's the same thing if this was a person standing up you have it where the camera like that straight on and then when you tilt it over you will see the top of that person so what i did now you should do this in the beginning i would take a person and i would do him i would use this this is my like quick my quick person this is always like my quick go-to person so what i would do i would start to give him like flat shoulders like that because you can always throw a head on there so if he is if his person is being tilted up and you don't have to worry about the rest of this because all of this is around but i would just use his shoulders as a marker because what you can do is you just throw the feet out and that will show you if he is standing straight up or if the camera is straight in front of him or if he's leaning back because you want to have a up shot i would just do like the foot would go flat like this do that have a triangle have a triangle and that would represent he is standing straight but once you put that foot out you basically you're seeing standing straight okay camera got, I'm looking in the monitor so it's gonna be kind of hard for me to do that um, standing straight and then when you start to see him more you see how these feet actually come out more instead of being flat on the bottom like that so if I'm doing my land, here's my land, let's just say, here's my triangle, here's whatever, my stage he's standing on. So I would do my characters like this, my guy like this, and then I would show just a little bit of shoulder. Let's see if I can do this darker so you guys can see it. I would show a little bit of shoulder representing I'm seeing the top of this guy and then I put his head on accordingly so if he's up his feet won't be flat his feet will come out just a little bit so right off the bat you can tell you're starting to see from the top of this guy and then I would put the head where I need to be so if this guy was flat you'd see his neck flat on a flat surface you're looking straight at him when I say flat you'd see his neck and you see his head like that so if he is, if the camera is angling a little bit over, this head is going to come down into the shoulder. You're still going to see some of the neck, but the head is going to come right down into the shoulder. And that represents you're being tilted, it's being tilted. And then again, that round the bottom of that cup. Since that's round, his neck is round, you have to do that. So the more that you go above that person, the more his head is going to come down into his into his shoulders. So if 
from like way above that guy, his head is going to be here and you really won't see too much neck. You see a little bit of neck. As I say, if he's if you're straight on at him, you're going to see this flat and then you're going to see the whole thing as he tilts over the head is going to come past this shoulder line, wherever this shoulder line is here. That head is going to dip down into that shoulder line and you see some neck. Arms, whole nine yards, here's the V for the neck. So whereas this one, that head is going to be way above his shoulders. Now that's how you put somebody on that land. So let's get into imagining stuff. Now, you, you still have to imagine characters. That's why I do this because you, if you're drawing a comic book, you got figures. You're going to have figures all over the place. So you're going to have to be able to see how they look when they are, when your camera's above them or below them on the side of them. And I think two, two videos back, I did one where I showed you how to do somebody from the top and then do somebody from the bottom looking up, from the ground looking, from the top looking down. Check, go back and check that out. So, in the last video, I talked about drawing like a nuclear submarine, a control station for a nuclear sub. So, unless you drove a nuclear sub, you wouldn't know what it looks like unless you saw a bunch of movies. Now, I saw, you know, I, I think a lot of us have seen movies with submarines and so forth. But if you have not, you have to kind of like, I don't want to say common sense, because I couldn't think of the word. I don't want to say common sense. I would say like, um, not common knowledge, but you just, you think about it. You think about it. I can't see it in my head, but I think about it. Okay. I know there's no windows in a submarine, you know, if I'm driving a submarine. So let's just say the camera's going to be behind the chair. So we're behind looking at the controls. They're going to be controls. Everybody knows that. So there's a chair in there. So let's just say this is my chair. This is the back of my chair that I'm looking at. This is the bottom of the chair or the part that you sit on. So, you know, there's no big window like a, driving a car. So there's going to be controls for that. So it's probably not a lot of room. It could be just, you know, enough for this guy and maybe another guy on the side. It's probably going to be a stick to, uh, to, to drive it. And I don't think it's going to be like the, the joystick on the for like an airplane, you know, where you got the buttons for the guns and so forth. I don't think it's going to be like that. It's more a, a steering wheel. So you're thinking to yourself, okay, there's going to probably be like some kind of steering wheel on it. But this is your creation. It's going to be a little steering wheel. And I'm sure there's probably going to be, steering wheel has to be connected to something. Let's, let's forget the chair for now because I'm drawing through the chair. It's probably going to be like, uh, um, what do you call it? Not a desk or shelf. Something that has the, that the steering wheel is connected to. This probably has the buttons. Let's get rid of this chair because this is throwing me, throwing me out. So, Using your imagination, without using my imagination, as I said, I don't want to say common sense. So it's probably going to have something up here, you know, maybe with um, the the depth and the speed and so forth. So again, this is your um, your drawing, but kind of common sense, common knowledge. Uh, you know, what do you what do you figure it looks like? Knowing it's not a window, as I said, it's not a window. It could have like some kind of screen here that shows, you know, outside the sub would be pitch black minus the light that they might have on it. But so that wouldn't be like a, a, a um, what do you call it, like a reverse screen or forward screen showing with the camera. So you would imagine that it has like all kind of knobs and dials and stuff where he could see, you know, the speed and maybe control some buttons or something like that to control, you know, whatever the sub is. So you think about it, you have your speed and you have your direction. Uh, what else does that do? <laughs> Pitch and y'all, and then just add those to it. And if you have a second person here, maybe like it's divided. And here's another screen here. Would he have the wheel or would he just have um, controls? Look at Red October. Good movie. And what was the other one with with um, 
the guy. Another good movie. Yeah, you can't even think of the name of the movie. So you just add some until you can find that. I mean, you may never be able to find, you know, the image of a submarine um, control panel. So whatever it is that you are thinking about or trying to draw. See, I don't I don't really know that word. It's not going to be common sense or common knowledge. It's you eliminate what you know that is not. And it could have like, well, how would that go? The control panels, something on, on the roof. Let's say you round it off here and it could be some things here that with some knobs or some buttons or something there. And then if this, this whole thing is round, this is the control panel. This could be like some wires or something here so with some more controls hanging down something you put in what you think is there you don't necessarily have to know what is there just like if you're drawing uh, a creature you want to draw like this lion creature you know never seen a lion creature before because they don't exist but you say okay to start out with the head for the creature and you know lions have these kind of noses that and a little muzzle mouth muzzle mouth like that and they have the little furry thing and the nose comes in. and I do this because I know I've been kind of studying for my uh, my next book and they have this so you get as close as you can and then you start to add see stuff and you start to add it okay I want them to have tremendous fangs I want them to have like like long hairy ears uh, a ball spot at the top of his head. Yeah, he could have a ball spot at the top of his head. Separate. Right there. That's his little skin. Uh, crazy looking eyes. Uh, well, we'll keep the eyes. That comes here. And then fur that hangs down there. So just because you can't see it, you just kind of like, as I say, I don't, the word, it's not common sense or I can't think of a word I couldn't think of it in the last video and I can't think of it now but eliminate what wouldn't be and add what would be if you're doing a world a, a um, strange world how would that be first of all how is the camera looking at it is it looking at it flat or is it looking at it at that angle now if I'm drawing like a big flat surface, say this is my picture, right? Here. This is my paper right here. And I want to draw where you can see the ground. You don't necessarily have to say, here's my ground and it's gonna go back like this. You can have that point somewhere where you wanna end your ground to your, for your sky or there's mountains or tree lines or whatever, but it can go way out here, it can end or start that triangle could start way out here so that you won't see that it ends here. It can end here and then come up here, or this can go all the way across like this, and it can come out like that. So that nobody will see that perspective. But the angle that you put stuff on will show them how high or low your perspective viewpoint is by just this being round at the bottom or your person, you're seeing some of the top of his shoulders. And the placement of his head and his feet. That shows you the angle that you are seeing. So that's gonna be your first thing that, that you're going to have to do when drawing, if you're drawing a scene, here's my paper, is establish how much of an angle this camera's on or what camera angle you are looking at this thing that you're trying to imagine to draw. Is it a, if you're drawing a volcano, is the volcano, is it going to just be like flat land like that? Or is it going to be way in the background to where you can't see 
you know, the top of it because it's rounded, most volcanoes like that? Or is it going to be, are you above it seeing down on the volcano? So I think that's the first thing you have to do. If I'm going to draw my guy here, you know, what angle am I going to draw him on? Am I going to draw him on that flat angle where your camera is looking right at him, down at him? Am I going to be above him where I can see him? Or am I going to be below him where I can see up? That is going to be the first thing you have to do when you draw something or when you're, you're setting up your scene for whatever's going to happen. So, yeah, I go through paper. This stuff is not cheap. You go through paper like crazy. So after you establish your angle or your flatness of your ground or wherever it is, then you have to put your objects on it, whether it be square, round, triangle, rectangle. Are you focused on me? Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's the blue pencil. And this is where I say about manipulating shapes. This is the hard part. You have to manipulate that shape. If I want to put a box on this floor, if I want to put a what, a ball, you can put a ball anywhere, a circle anywhere, a box, or if I want to put the cylinder, we'll go with the cylinder again on this floor, uh, the triangle on this floor. I think a triangle goes anywhere, you can put a triangle anywhere, or whatever shape that I want to put on this floor, whatever object it is I may come up with for my creation, I have to be able to set it on in the location right. So the box would be more like this. You've seen, since I'm seeing all of this top of this floor, this box is going to be like that. This is going to be, if it's not a, um, a rectangle and it's a cylinder, then you're going to have to see the top of it inside it and the bottom is going to be curved. If you're going to have this thing here, depending on which way your, 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 your circle, your point is going to go, now this one, I have it like right here, and the same with the box. The box is over here. You're going to have your point. You're going to have your line, okay, your your horizon line. So this is going to go here to this, and you don't, everything doesn't have to come from this line. This, I can have it like over here. Don't want to go too, too, too crazy because front of this. So I can have it like go over here just slightly. So everything will go over here. But this would have to be turned that way. So I'm just saying you don't want to go too crazy over it because it throws everything off. And triangle, wow, the triangle's crazy. Triangle's crazy. So as I said, I think triangle will fit kind of anywhere. So you're going to have to see just a little bit of the side of it if it's like this perfect triangle, which would be this. This is my line just kind of screwed up. to show that it is sitting on that plane. I think that's the word I might have been looking for, that plane correctly. So whether I'm putting a chair, I'm in the kitchen, I'm doing like a dining room, uh, I'm doing a kitchen, kitchen or dining room uh, scene. Maybe my other chair is gonna go back like this. It's all just boxes. It's all just boxes. If I showed you, you, you see the chair. I should be drawing bigger. It's just a box. Box, same thing as this, minus the bottom square. And then you can just do a backing and then take, erase this bottom line, have your legs come out. And this leg, you might not see too much of that leg there. Same thing on the other side. The other side, maybe on a chair. And we're having a meeting at the round table. Uh, what was I doing? I don't know. I, just, I lost that one. I lost that one. So let's bring this one here. Let's just kind of bring this one down. No, this one's got to be like this. Let's see, I lost that one. It's going to go this way. Pull it back. That's all right. They're touching each other. Overlapping. Again, there's that box, so this one could be behind that one. So 
So not being able to imagine something, but you have to put that thing in the right plane, on the right plane of existence so that people will see it. And then that's one last thing that you have to worry about. Even though, yeah, a nuclear submarine, the driving station is nothing like what I just did, but at least everything is looks fairly good and it's, it's sitting right. So people won't really question it. And then if I put a table here for everyone to sit at, it has to be on that right plane too. So that's going to be your first thing is find out your, your plane, your angle of your plane, your ground, your room, whatever. Set your shapes right on it would be number two. And as well as your people on it as well. Remember, I just do this. A lot of times, if, you're, if your characters are small, they really won't see your shoulders, but they will see the way your feet are going out. Your feet have to be flat enough to, to go on that. Your head comes down a little bit and because your, your shoulders are basically just kind of like this anyway. So you just dip the head down into this and then it just shows you that the person you're seeing more above the person and then if he's a superhero, he's got like a tight suit on, you do this triangle with his uh, collarbone. But if you got a shirt on, you won't see it. What we show is the roundness of this, the roundness of the bottom of the shirt, the roundness of the sleeves, to show that this person is standing or sitting at the angle or on an angle. So that's going to be first step because you say to yourself, okay, I want this, I want that, I want that, and it's going to be here. So wherever the here is, you establish the ground that here that that is here, whatever this is going to be sitting on. It's got to be sitting on that ground. It's got to be sitting right. Then you determine what it is you want to sit on that ground, and whatever it is is going to be a shape. You know, I keep harping on the shape, but it is a shape. Everything is a shape. This this these earphones, which are really nice earphones. Um, let's just say, I draw this. I go for anything I see. I use a basic shape first. I use a basic shape, which is this right here. So then I know this is round. So I'll just round this off here. There's a circle here. This is cut off at an angle. This is like almost like uh, drawing a mountain or uh, uh, upside down U except it comes all the way over. So detailing it, it will go straight and then it curves around. And then you have this, get the closest shape that you can just to get it right. Then you can say, okay, this comes out and it goes around like this and it curves up like that. And then basically you have what it is you're trying to draw by just pulling out the basic shapes of it. So, if I detail that, this, a little piece of this down, and then this comes over here. So, whatever it is you want to draw, know the shape of it first. Just know the basic shape of it. Get that basic shape right. Get that basic shape as close as you can get to right, get that basic shape to sit right on whatever it is sitting on. And then you will be able to start drawing these things from your imagination that you cannot imagine. Now, you might not be able to imagine all the detail or the texture of something, but you have it sitting in the right place at the right angle. And that's half the battle right there. All right. So let's recap and then end this. I want to draw something. It's going to be from my imagination, but I can't really see it. I don't, I can't imagine it. So I'm just trying to think of something real quick. Let's just say I want to draw this big spaceship and it's in the dock, spaceport dock. Uh, okay, spaceship in a spaceport dock. Spaceport dock or dock or whatever, getting repaired or reloaded or refueled or whatever. So I can't see it, but this is what I want. This is what I want. So what is the shape of the spaceship, first of all? You want it pointy, you want it square, you want it round, you want it whatever. Okay, so let's say I want a kind of a 
pointy looking thing. That's just, I'm, I'm going to use the hammerhead from um, Star Wars, the, the blockade runner, the hammerhead thing. I call it the hammerhead. Um, so basic shape. I want my basic shape. So now first thing is how, how am I seeing it? How am I seeing Am I seeing it from the top, from the bottom, from the side? Am I seeing it real close? Am I seeing it far back? So let's do this angle. So as I say, anything you see from the top, you want to kind of have this, that little triangle going back that little triangle so if, if I, I'll, I'll just do it i'll just do it okay so this is i don't know what that ship looks like but i kind of kind of remember what it looks like so i'm going to use a square first because i can't really can't really get it can't really get it in my head so here's my square right here so it's going to go back and i don't want it this back okay since i showed you this i'll, I'll just do it like that it's like the one point perspective kind of thing so and then that's going to be the top. Here's my side of it. It's going to be fairly thick, kind of. So now I want to try to chop the pieces out. So I know it's going to be like that hammerhead ship. So I'm going to use a cylinder. And I could actually pull it up to look at it, but I'm not going to pull it up to look at it. So here's a cylinder here. And then here is more of a what kind of a square kind of thing right here and then I want to get the engines kind of like this so this is my my, my, my my rough I can't see it in my head but I can see it kind of shape right like that okay so using shapes and then shapes are going back in this kind of angle funky angle so I know I've got like three engines here, separate the engines. I'll kind of make them like rectangular, rectangular engines. Comes down like that. So there's my ship right there. So let's say I want to add a little bit, a little bit, a little bit uh, plain. So let's just add a little bit of little something to this so I'm gonna bring this and this and this and just lift it up and all these are just shapes on top of shapes on top of shapes set on the right plane okay so let's do and I'll ink this it's gonna be a really weird weird ink let's just say I want some guns on the side so here's like the circle it's gonna be like some gunner porch right here and here's another one here because it is a blockade runner. It's got to have some guns. So I want to like chop some of this out here. Just like take a like a, a ice cream scoop and just scoop that thing right out of here. So it's going to be like a dip right here. And maybe a little dip right here just to keep it going. And there's another one on the side just for whatever aesthetics. And then maybe a little gun port here and the gun port here. So this is going to be here. I'm going to kind of keep the shape of this here and let's just put some windows right here so now I'm, I'm just kind of like imagining something that I can't imagine by just using not common sense or common logic just what I want to add to it and there's some, just some shape to it so maybe there's something like this a little detail this is where you just come get creative and add detail nobody can can really tell you because a lot of people write me and say can you show me how to do this show you how to do this the I can show you how to do the basis, like the basic shape of something, but like when you want to start putting detail in it, that's on you, you know, because if I do this ship, if I show you how to do this ship and then you use it in your book, that's my ship that I just showed you, especially if you, if you use it line for line. So I'll show you the basics of it and then you can put your, your, um, your spin to it. So let's just say I'll put just something right here. Just because, like, okay, this could be a gun, another gunner thing right here. There's another one on the other side. Um, whatever, just just some little detail, a little another little ice cream scoop taken out of, and maybe some antennas on the top. Um, radar thing here. Let's put the radar in the middle. It could be round. Remember, if something if something is a cylinder, you've got to show the opening of it according to the 
plane that it's sitting on. So this is my my um, radar dish. It's got the thing here. Here's my motors. Maybe some little something connecting the motors. Engines, motors. Well, somebody said a motor is a motor pushes an engine. A motor pushes an engine pulls. Yeah, like a train engine and a car motor. One pulls, one pushes. So yeah, yeah. So just take that with a grain of salt. So you know, and windows, and I can just stay here all day and do um, little detail, little detail, which really in the end really means nothing. So you have that. You have your right plane. You have your your, your thing on here. So now it's in a port. Is is on a? It's in in the port. Is it in the space? Is it on the land? So if it's on land, I'm gonna have to draw some kind of feet somewhere somewhere to it or if it's in spaceport i'm gonna have some draw some kind of cranes that is you know hooked on it if it's floating you know a crane could just be holding it right here one little crane could be holding it right here but depending on the amount of of detail you really want you're gonna to have to figure out what does what do cranes look like and you can you can see those kind of things at any con big construction site like building 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 buildings kind of construction site so i have no idea at this particular point in time what i'm going to do with this thing which is exactly what i'm trying to tell you guys how to do so i'm just going to put some crane um arms or one or two to um to show and then it could be, you know, a line or something that's going down into this. It could be another crane arm. Um, not to kill the picture, I'm going to put one like right here. Actually, crane arms are like this. Anyway, you have these, the way they're welded for to give it more, um, more of, I'm just going to put these down, more strength. To hold it. So now this could be here. You know, look at look at some like some Star Trek space stuff, and see some of the shapes that they use to fill in like the wall panels and just you know any anything like this could have the name on it just to fill in space. You know, USS whatever, and it could have you know just like little cutout vents. And I'm getting into detail, which I'm not supposed to get into detail. And then you can have whatever the background of your spaceport, you know, here. I don't, you know, you have like the catwalks and, you know, some, you know, catwalks here, uh, windows here. So people can see, you know, your, the ship is getting worked on. Another window, another port, and it can, one can come across the top of it here walkway can come across the top and as you go along you should be saying okay now this could be this and this could be that here's your walkway looking down and you can have like a piece of equipment underneath here this is why i love drawing this is why i teach drawing because it is such a joy for me to do and i want other people to feel that joy that same joy that i feel when i'm drawing something because there's no better kind of like release for me to than to create something because I, it, when I get into the swing of it, I'll draw and I'll look up and it's like 10 o'clock at night. I didn't have lunch. I didn't have, uh, didn't have uh, dinner because I'm just so into what I'm doing because that creative juices are just flowing. And this is one reason that I do this because there are times when YouTube is not paying me because I'm not getting enough people to look at this. And there are times when I say, why am I doing this? What just, you know, stop this, go to Udemy and have people um, pay for these lessons, but not everybody can pay, you know, can afford to pay for something every time they use it or look at it. So this is, this is why, because when I was young, I couldn't, I definitely couldn't pay for nothing. Somebody, you know, paying me or me paying somebody to show me how to draw or to do whatever. So this is why I do what I do. For you guys because it's a love for me and i want you guys to feel that same love when you're creating or that same joy when you are creating your um pictures so i want to do i want to ink this but i want to ink this off camera because this is this is i might throw some some good detail in here 
for whatever it's worth and then show you the final product. I don't want to just sit here and figure out, okay, ink this, ink, and then take another 50 something minutes just to ink the picture. So I'll be back in a second with the finished product. All right, so here we go, the ink product. I use a ruler and some of it, a lot of it, I just did it freehand. So this is the final product. This is like two days later anyway, or a day later, so I forgot where I left off at. But yeah, I'm gonna end it here. Um, thinking back to what I said a couple of days earlier, if you can't really see it, I don't, I still don't want to say common sense, but common knowledge of what goes and what doesn't go, you start adding it up and you put it in its right place on the plane. And then later on, you can just add stuff to it to make it into what it is that you want, whether it's a person or some kind of beast or vehicle or whatever. Uh, building and then you eventually get it you don't really have to to see it see it but you know what the shapes are like and as i say if you stack a shape on top of another shape on top of another shape then you eventually will get something that you can start to imagine and then say oh i want to add this or i want to add that and then just go and look at um if you can look at like a, i mean i could have went into um and looked at like the starship enterprise or you know some other space things and take some of their little designs and just add it to it to, to fill it out more. But I just wanted to get this ink so I can finish the video to show you guys. So that's going to be it for that. So don't say I can't draw. Or don't say I don't know what it looks like. So now you know how to use your imagination when your imagination is not working. So give a thumbs up if you like this and um, leave a comment. And please tell some other artists. If you're an artist, I know you have artist friends. Tell these people that, hey, this Brian is out there. He's trying to help you guys draw and become a better artist. So that's going to be it for this video, and I will see you guys in the next video. So keep drawing. I'm out.